Okay, hi everybody. Um, I'm delighted to be joined today by Joe Kundal, my colleague at Community Foundation and um, Chair of Open Clasp Theatre. So welcome, Joe. Um, and we're just going to have a conversation um, about being a chair, the journey towards being a chair, and some personal reflections um, on what it's like to be to be chair of a charity. Um, so first of all, um, yeah, welcome. Um, and could you tell us a little bit about um, your journey towards becoming a chair, please? Yeah, I can. It's um, it, it's really my journey of becoming a trustee as well, um, because um, I have been on the board of Open Class before. I think it's coming up to nine years now. Um, so I, yeah, that's right. It was 2012. I was approached and asked if I would be interested in becoming a trustee. Um, at the time I was working at Northern Stage, I was within the cultural sector um, and they um they were reinvigorating their board and they wanted some people with kind of on the ground experience within the cultural sector. So they asked me if I would join and I did an instant thing of not of why, why me? I don't know if I've got anything that I can offer. I was really, really nervous and um, I, I was excited and I knew of open class, but I wanted to be involved in them. Um, and I knew that I aligned with their politics and their feminism and, um, so I was really interested in the company, but I instantly was like, oh, I don't know what I can bring. Um, and I, I very much thought actually my kind of place at Northern Stage, well, you know, I can I can bring that that experience. So I kind of lent back onto the organisation I worked for. Um, and I'll probably come back to this a little bit when we talk later, because actually yeah. I've gone through a journey of realising that actually it's it's about your own unique experience. It, you shouldn't only think about the kind of the organisations behind you. Um, so yeah, I joined, so that was 2012 and I was on the board for about three years and then I became vice chair. And then in 2016, um, I stepped into the role of chair. Um, so I've been chair since then and I am actually stepping down in. December so I will have been on the board for nine years by the time I um, stepped down in December. Okay and how significant do you think it was that you um, were vice chair before you became chair? Um, I I mean the vice chair role doesn't necessarily mean that you then become chair and um, that is the way it worked out. Um, I for me as a, as a relatively new well being new to trusteeship I think it was useful because it was a bit of um, a, um, I was going to use the word induction, but it, it wasn't that formal, but you, you know, it, it meant that I was kind of sat alongside and there was a few, the, the our chair at the time, Di Fischinella was really, really brilliant at kind of making sure she was kind of throwing opportunities at me and kind of like bringing, bringing me through. She really encouraged me to go for that vice chair position, um, which, you know, I, I, I probably did need then I needed someone to say we we want you um and I've kind of I've been on a I've definitely gone on through a journey I'm probably going to use that term a lot even though it sort of makes me go but I I have it has been a real journey my time yeah. with open class there, there isn't another word to use um but I I've gone on a journey where I've realized my I've, of of confidence basically it has built my confidence a lot and made me realize that I have lots to offer but I needed somebody to kind of sit stand alongside me and and say that and actually open class that's a lot of what we do as an yeah. organization what they do is uh, and they do it with some you know some of the most vulnerable women in our society um but there's a there's a real culture of nurturing and empowering um and that you know that that comes from the bottom up, but actually is really present within the board, board of trustees as well. Yeah, and I think being a chair and being a trustee, I think it is a journey and it's a very personal journey um, for every individual. So I think, you know, I think it's a really good bit of terminology. Um, and so what do you think the qualities are um, to be a good chair? Um, I think you need to, and I don't necessarily think you have to have this at the start, but you need to be aware of your, of kind of, who you are and therefore kind of be work hard to empower yourself and think about authentic leadership I have spent a lot of time worrying and wondering if I should have been in that position because I'm not a natural I don't think I'm a natural leader um and I and and part of that is because I have a, a 
predisposition to always thinking about things from lots of different points of views. So I, I, I never, I very rarely land in one place and go, this is what we should do, or this is what we should, shouldn't do. Um, because I can, I, it's just the way I'm wired as I'm always thinking about lots and lots of different things. And I used to really see that as a weakness, but now I've, I have really come full circle and actually think it's, it's one of my strengths. And, and, and I, and that is what I am bringing to the role of being a chair of an organization um and in the moment we we whilst i've been chair that has been a really positive thing there might be times when actually being very decisive is a, is, a, is needed but you can only be who you are and and i there's been times when i've tried to be something else and actually it doesn't work because you're you're essentially you're acting and that's really hard unless you're a professional actor <laughs> so i my my one like 100% takeaway thing is about um, being authentic, being who you are. And um, that doesn't mean you don't need to have all the answers. You just need to, in fact, you need to know when you don't know the answers. Yeah. And I guess being part of an organisation that you really, really care about as well, um, so that you can be your most natural self. Um, and, and on that theme, um, what would you say are um are the most sort of the three things that you would say to somebody if they were considering becoming a chair and it might be relevant to becoming a trustee um, but specifically um, in relation to being a chair are there three things that you would say to someone considering that as a next step yes there are and I've thought about them in advance <laughs> so hopefully I'll be succinct and um, I would say the number one thing is about do um doing so within an organization that you really believe in that that holds the same values and politics and um kind of vision as you um because that makes everything that follows easier because you know why you're doing it so there's been times um whilst i've been chair actually whilst i've been a trustee um that every you know all, all the different roles that we Hold, that we hold you know for a job a mom a friend a, all of those things a person who sometimes needs some time just to themselves yeah. all of those things have collided and it's and it's been hard to know oh there's something else I'm, I'm responsible for but it's never been hard once I've gone back and reminded myself yeah. why I do why I volunteer with open class um, and it's because I absolutely 100% care about what they do yeah. so it makes all of that stuff easier because whenever whenever things have been hard I can go back to but it's worth it yeah yes definitely. almost the, the fact that it's hard makes it worth it, it you know yeah. those things are really really intertwined so that would be the first thing is yeah. find an organization you really care about I can't imagine you know, it because it's brilliant and there's low you know there's been loads of times when um I, I have personally benefited from being chair. You know, if there's lots I can, it's widened my horizons. It's informed me. It's educated me. Um, it's something you can put on your CV or all, all of that stuff. Yep. But it but it is hard. Yes. And there have been times when I've been like, I don't actually have enough headspace for all of these things. But to go, but I really care. And I yep. like, and I, and I love them. And I love what they do has meant that I've been able to plow through those moments. So that's the first thing. The second thing is, um, I've, I've already said it earlier, but I'll repeat it again here, is that you you, you sh- remember that you don't need to have all the answers. Yeah. Being chair of an organisation doesn't mean that you know everything. Um, it, it, you need to remember, um, you need to be able to admit when you don't know. Yeah. Um, and you need to think about, well, how can I find out? Or how can, some, how can we bring someone in who does have the answers, but you absolutely don't don't need to know everything um and then the third thing is about remembering that it's not just you I mean these are all intertwined really but remembering that it's not just you that you're you're part of a team so you are a team within the the trustee trustee group of trustees within the board but you're also a team with that you know alongside that staff team and then you're a team as a unit as a whole organization um and so, so rem- remember that and, and try when the, at the times when it might be hard or and the times of celebration, remember to look out and see who's around you, who your allies are um, and, and allow space for that and allow, you know, kind of use the times to have those chats over here and get to know each other and not, you know, know each other wider than just when you're around the, <laughs> I was going to say around the table, but actually in a Zoom box 
as, yeah. as has been for the last year so capitalize on those moments so that you're kind of strengthening those relationships and 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 take the time to try and strengthen them for other people as well so when new trustees come through um think about ways to make sure that they can that they can connect back to the staff team etc yeah no they're really really helpful saying, yeah and I think um I think often people do think that the chair is the boss of the board or needs to know more than the rest of the board. And actually what you've said is just so useful to hear and that actually you're part of a big team and you can ask for support when you need it. Um, And that whole idea of having to have real passion for an organisation is really crucial as well, because as you say, there's a lot of work involved. But if you really care about what the organisation does, then it's absolutely worth it. Um, And you're going to do a great job because you care enough. Um, So, I mean, is there anything else that we haven't touched on? that you would like to to say to anyone who's an aspiring chair um, about maybe the best thing about being a chair um, or the thing that was unexpected um, or anything about the relationship with the rest of the team and of course sort of the chief exec and all of the the other relationships that are crucial specifically as chair of an organization. Yeah I'm gonna pick out one of the prompts there about thinking about the the best thing about it and I would go back to I mean being chair of open class has been probably one of the most formative experiences I have ever had and I feel like it's um the the part of me where all the all the different bits of me come together weirdly so you know I work I've got I've worked professionally in the cultural sector um and I am a feminist and I am a mum of um two kids a boy and a girl and I feel like when I'm working for open class like the value that I get from it cover um gives me added value to all the other different bits of my life um because I want to raise feminists I want the world to be a better place for them I want them to know that you that as well as going to work to earn money you go to work to do your civic to do a civic duty and I and when I say to them you can't disturb me because I'm doing this important thing for open class for um, I'm doing this important work thing they'll sometimes say which work is it is it community foundation work or is it open class work yeah. and I you know that is really important yeah. to me so that is the best thing it's 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 pride like I, I'm really proud to be involved yeah. in them and I'm proud of myself for, for doing the giving the extra time and and thought and headspace but but the what I get back is kind of infinite compared to that what I have to put in I would say so yeah. that's the best thing um I rambled there and I can't remember what the other the other just sum, anything else about the, the relationships um but I think that everything that you've said there just kind of brings to life what it is to be a chair um, and I think that's probably a really great place to leave it actually um, and I think that just shows exactly why you're such a, a brilliant chair and why I particularly want to have the conversation with you today um, and yeah and if anyone who's watching this has any further thoughts um, or wants to be um, wants to get involved as a trustee or to pursue a chairship um, then you know the trustee match here at Community Foundation is here would love to chat um, and just thank you once again Joe. Um, it's been really really interesting really inspiring um and yeah thanks for doing everything that you do for for open class and being a great ambassador for trusteeship 